What's up guys, it's me Sean. I'm so glad to finally start talking about this series, Magi. And today, we're going to talk about the top 10 strongest characters. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment in number 10. And this is a spot shared by two people, Yunnan and Judar. Both two of the four magicians that have the ability to shape the earth and can choose a king that's worthy of ruling it. What makes Magi so special in the series is the fact that they're able to use Rook from their environment rather than having to pull Rook from themselves like ordinary magicians or anyone who uses Magoi manipulation. And it's because of this Magi have limitless power. They literally have unlimited Magoi at their fingertips. But to make things fair, Magi still have their limits. At the beginning of the series, these limits do matter. And we see an example with this with Aladdin getting hungry and he summons Ugo, but after Ugo's been out for some time, Aladdin gets exhausted. But at the end of the series, when it comes to these characters, their stamina gets so strong, it seems as though the limits that were originally opposed on them don't even matter. And this would actually make the difference between both Yunnan and Judar, with Judar being slightly stronger than Yunnan. Yunnan is still extremely strong despite that. He is an absolute monster. He's the only character who can use alchemic magic outside of another character on this list. To put alchemic magic in the simplest forms, it's basically atomic manipulation. And this allows him to make anything out of nothing. He basically takes subatomic particles, or just particles if you, do, if you want to call them that, and recombines them to form something brand new. From a house, to food, and even another human being, you can make anything. He is one of the only two magicians who are capable of using this magic. But not only this, Yunnan is also immortal. Every time he dies, he returns to the sacred palace. And with his current body, he's died nine times. His alchemic magic, he can also use this in combat, using it for both defensive and offensive abilities. But his most powerful tool in terms of offensive options would be his lightning magic. He's even capable of producing the same destructive properties of Sinbad's move, Bororok Saika, which can split the sky and destroy mountains, casually. And keep in mind, Sinbad did this when he was much weaker, and Yunnan's could most likely match the current Sinbad. But unfortunately, it seems like Yunnan has a much smaller stamina pool than Judar, and that's exactly why, or one of the reasons why, I put Judar above him if not slightly above him, since they both share the number 10 spot. But not only this, Judar has some tricks up his sleeve that makes him an absolute force to be reckoned with. Judar has every mage's kryptonite in this series. He has a secret ability that no one else can use. Well, I guess you could say he's one of the few characters that can actually do this, because, uh, since everybody gets extremely broken in this series, they most likely can do this as well. But I digress. With an isolation barrier, Judar can cut off anybody's magic. An automatic trump card. Well, unless you're better than him at hand-to-hand -hand combat. Outside of the isolation barrier, Judar has the knowledge of every single maid from Magnusted, allowing for him to use advanced magic formulas that are even more complicated and stronger than Aladdin. One of his strongest moves, Black Lightning Spears, is so strong, it has the power to swallow an entire island. The storms that he can conjure are so vicious when he adds wind magic and ice magic to it, his ice hurricanes will absolutely decimate you. But not only this, Judar has another form. It doesn't have an official name, but I'm going to call it the medium form. When Il-Ra was going to land and destroy the planet during the war at Magnusted, this giant black ball known as a medium, which is a build-up of a bunch of black rook, was used to summon him. What makes Judar so frightening is that he's capable of practically reenacting this event and becoming that same monster. This would mean everything he would make contact with would die. 
as he would steal Rook from everything and only get stronger as he absorbs it. The maximum magic of 13 Metal Vessel users couldn't even kill this single medium. And Judar has access to this power. Honestly, I can't pick between the two on who's stronger because they each have their pros and cons. So I think it's fair that they both share the number 10 spot. As for number 9, we have Arba. Outside of David, she is probably the most intimidating character in all of Magi. She is the greatest swordsman in the entire series. In Solomon's Sword Master. Nobody can stand a chance against her in a sword fight. And as the leader of Al Thamen, she is so strong. Cohen, one of the few characters that could potentially rival Simbad, was truly afraid of her. And Cohen was one of the only three characters that could use multiple gins. She is so strong, she could repeatedly summon magic on the scale of maximum magic. She can do all of this without even trying. Just by slashing her arms, her claws, she is capable of splitting the ocean. And she can use Aladdin's mom's special technique, Bor Al Sam. But to make matters worse, she's also a Magi, so she also gets the perks of being a Magi. She can completely immobilize any opponent using her spell, Funeral Puppeteer. But not only this, she also has a medium form, just like Judar. And she can also summon all of Al Thamen to fight for her. If you fight her, you are fighting every single member of this organization. This would include every single magician that helped destroy the previous world known as Alma Tehran. They're so strong, they're capable of using every single maximum magic from every single djinn in the series. Because their powers originate from the 72 god staffs that metal vessels are derived from. And on top of all of this, Arba is unkillable. You can be stronger than her, but despite that, that does not mean you can kill her. She only has one counter. You'd have to rewrite her body on an atomic level. If you blow her up into pieces, those pieces will unlimitedly put themselves back together. She is immortal and has been alive for over a millennia. Oh yeah, and an isolation barrier can actually counter her. And for the number 8 spot, we have Morgiana. We all know how strong a Finalis is, but the strength that we've witnessed from the anime, from the red-headed humanoids, pales in comparison to their true form. Morgiana is so strong in her human form, she can fight them. She can fight a Finalis, a Crimson Shishi, in its truest form and was able to do so by training with them on the Dark Continent. And this would inevitably make Morgiana the fastest living creature on Earth, and the strongest in terms of pure physical capabilities. And because of this, she completely outclasses Arba. In the words of Morgiana to Arba, you thought you were the strongest in Almatron, only because you had never fought a Finalis or Fenaris, whatever translation you guys want. Up next, we have Hakryu. He is one of the only three dungeon capturers that can use more than one Jin equipped, with his current amount being two, Zagon and Belial. And both of these Jins are extremely broken. But first, let's talk about Zagon. Zagon's special ability is that it can create life out of nothing. The most basic practice of this would be Hakryu using wood and creating plants to help him fight during combat, practically giving him unlimited flexibility and options. But not only this, Hakryu can conduct his Magoi into bacteria and single-celled organisms and create monsters that can do his bidding, creating a storm of monsters that can easily swallow the opposition's army. The amount of variety that Hakryu has at his disposal with just Zagon alone seems like it would be enough. But unfortunately, it isn't. If Zagon is the djinn that creates life, then Belial is the djinn that manipulates it, including your soul. Belial is so strong that its power is akin to which King Solomon used to seal Il-Ra. What he used 
to seal away a god. It may not be able to be performed at that same level, but what it's able to do is cut away at somebody's soul. If Belial touches you, your soul will be sent to another dimension where no one will ever find you. If you were to cut your arms or legs, they are not simply cut off. They are gone forever. And with Belial, Hakryu can manipulate the five senses. Whatever you can see, hear, touch, smell, or even taste can be manipulated by him. He can cut all of your senses off, and you'll practically be dead. His gen equips are absolutely insane. But not only this, he was able to face off against Arba in a sword fight, and was trained by Takeru, the king of Kina. And another thing that makes Hakuri so broken is the fact that he could control the plants from Almaturan. He was easily capable of competing with Arba, and besting her by constantly disarming her with his same plants from Almatron. And for the number 6 spot, we have Alibaba. With Amon as his metal vessel, he is capable of cutting through anything, even other metal vessels, well as long as they don't have Mogoi manipulation. So I guess you could say just about anything. Now I'm going to try to dodge the spoilers here, but Alibaba has a very unique ability. And this is mainly the reason as to why he's so high on the list. Alibaba spent 100 years in the spirit world. And because of this, he developed the ability of hyper concentration. And not only this, when he was stuck on the dark continent with Judar, he was stuck inside of a doll-like body. And because of this, his senses were so sharpened, he can experience a single moment as if it were an eternity. And because of this, he can see how to defeat any monster and any opponent, no matter how strong they are. Think of Max Payne's ability, but on steroids. Maybe that statement right there isn't even doing it justice. As for the number 5th spot, we have Aladdin. Aladdin is a Magi and has all of the perks that comes with being one. And above all else, Aladdin is omniscient. Yes, you heard that right. Aladdin with Solomon's wisdom is all-knowing. He is so strong he can use magic from both worlds, Earth and Almatron. And because of this, Aladdin is also capable of using probably the most cruelest magic or one of them inside the series, hitting you with pure propulsion. You are endlessly sent in one direction and you will never come back and there is absolutely no counter to this. You will never return and you will move in that direction forever. Aladdin is so strong, he is capable of single-handedly taking down Arba and all of Althamin. Aladdin becomes so strong no one can ever touch him, as he wields Solomon's magic. He warps space and can deflect any attack. His alchemic magic is so strong he can practically make anything, even something as complicated as a human being. At some point in the story he perfects magics from both worlds, and can develop a shield that no one can penetrate, not Arba, Sinbad, or even Solomon and he eventually surpasses his father. As for the number 4 spot, we have God Solomon and Illah. God Solomon being the creator of the new world and Illah being the creator of the old. As easily as they're both able of creating a planet, they can equally destroy one. As we've seen with Almatron and in Magnostad, Ilra was capable of draining Rook from every single living being and Almatron itself and ultimately destroying it due to its mere touch. Unfortunately, we aren't shown the full capabilities of them, but as they are gods, they are capable of doing anything and everything. For the third spot on this list, we have Ugo, the guardian of the sacred palace, and the creator of it as well. Ugo is the reason why the world in Magi is the way it is. He created the Magi system, a system that will be able to find the king of the current world. He is the reason why Magi exists, metal vessels, and other phenomena that occur in the series. He is the world's greatest magician, and a multi-layered god. He is so strong, he took Illa, the previous god on this list, and put him in a fish tank. A fish tank that would contain a universe for that same god to manage. Ugo is omnipotent, and he is a god above gods. For the second spot, we have Elder David. He is able to overthrow Ugo and take his place as a god above gods. 
just like Ugo, he would be omnipotent, but not only this, he can see fate, and he will constantly grow stronger, and try to contest the number one spot on this list, Sinbad. Sinbad is the strongest character in the god of this series. He overthrows Ugo and David and maintains complete control of the sacred palace. He is omnipotent and can do anything. He even altered everyone's beliefs on the world and made them all want to become one with Rook. And he sent an army of angels to destroy the earth. David and Sinbad would fight over the sacred palace and alter the hierarchy of gods back and forth. And in the end, he was able to fend off David and save the world. If you guys enjoyed this video and wish to see more Magi content, don't forget to like this video and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next Magi video. Do you agree with this list? If not, comment yours below. And with that, I'll see you guys later.